I just woke up and I am still in bed, but I need to film a new video, so just embrace the natural beauty. This is the infamous fuckboy story. It's going to sound really bad, because it was pretty bad. And I don't want anyone thinking like, oh, like she's so weak, like why couldn't she have walked away from someone like that way sooner? Why did she stick with someone as bad as this for so long? You know, yada, yada, yada. Yes, I do have self-respect. Yes, I don't take shit from people. But when you get into a situation where you have such deep feelings for someone, it's really, really hard to remove yourself. I was definitely being verbally and emotionally abused throughout this relationship, for lack of better words. And... I stuck around for a really long time and I don't know why because that's not my personality and I've dealt with fuckboys before and even like one rude sentence or one negative experience and they're dropped. So I don't know why I dealt with this person and put up with this stuff for so long. On the bright side, this guy happens to be in my favorite fraternity and if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have started coming around this fraternity and I wouldn't have made all the really amazing friends in that fraternity that I now have, that I literally couldn't imagine life or my college experience without. So I guess in that sense, it was a blessing, but it was, it was rough. Freshman year, freshman fall, no oh, freshman fall. Um, I've been in college for a day. I kid you not, it was the second day of college. And my bid day buddy, which if you join a sorority on bid day, when you find out what sorority you got in, they pair you with a girl who's in that sorority who like just like hangs out with you that day, like shows you the ropes. So you kind of have a little friend already from day one. So it's the second day of college and my bid day buddy and my roommate decide to go out together because my roommate also ended up in the same sorority, my freshman year roommate. And we all went out. And we were waiting in line for a bar and a guy walks up behind us like at the end of the line. And for some reason, I was like completely taken aback by him. Like not like love at first sight because that's a little much. But like I saw him and like had to speak to him, which still to this day, like a year and a half into college later, I have not yet met or seen someone or anything like that where I've been like, holy shit, like I need to talk to that person. I need to know that person. So I was like very drawn to him and I was kind of drunk. So I was turned to my roommate and my bid day buddy and I was like, oh my God, like look at this guy behind us. Like, should I talk to him? This guy in general is not really that attractive of a guy. Like to me, obviously he's attractive. I have very weird taste though, but this is a guy who's probably not considered attractive by most girls like probably by very few girls like all my friends who have met him even my guy friends who are in the same fraternity as him tell me that he is like ugly so my roommate and bid day buddy were kind of like what why but I was like fuck it like I have to talk to this guy like I don't know why but I had to so I just turned around and started talking to him you know like whatever small talk introduce myself and we just like talked and whatever through the whole line up to the bar. And then once I got inside the bar, I didn't really care. Like I was over it. Like I wanted to have fun. I was with my friends, but it was like nice to meet him, whatever. I don't know. The next week, so exactly one week later, I went out again, this time with different people to the same bar. And I was dancing, whatever. And I accidentally hit someone because I was like dancing too aggressively. I don't know. And I turned around to apologize, just like, sorry, like, I hit you. And I turn, and it's the same guy. I was like, oh my god, like, do you remember me? Like, I remember you, like, we met in line. And he was like, of course I remember you. Like, so smooth, like, spitting mad game. But I was so dumb and naive, to, like, that I couldn't pick up on the fact that it was just fucking spitting game. So I was just, like, oh, swooning. Like, I remember that moment so well. Like, I was just, like, in all like I just wanted this guy to like me so much like I wanted to talk to him like oh my god like I was like smitten like 
smitten at first sight, I guess. So we like exchanged numbers and like added each other on Facebook and then I like went back with my friends and he seems like really about me back. Like he was like texting me and like calling me while we were still at the bar. He was like, come take drinks with me. And then me and my friends ended up leaving to go to this fountain on campus that you get thrown in on your birthday. And since we left, he called me and he was like, where are you? I can't find you. And I was like, oh, we're going to the fountain. And he was like, don't move. I'm coming to meet you. And he literally left the bar and walked to the fountain. I was like, okay, like we're going to go home. Like it's late. Like my roommate's really drunk. We're tired, whatever. And he was like, okay, like I'll just walk you guys home. I just thought this guy was like the bee's knees. Okay. Like I've never liked someone so much. Like I already had feelings for him. Like I already knew I liked him. I had the biggest crush on him. Like I like needed this guy in my life. Okay. Him and I start texting like casually and whatever. And then we eventually start like hanging out, which in college a lot people hang out like really late at night and that's like normal. So we started hanging out like late at night and like I would sleep over at his place and stuff, but we wouldn't do anything because I hadn't been with anyone at this point but my ex-boyfriend who was the guy I lost my virginity to. So having sex with a new person would be like a really, really big deal. One day... After like X amount of weeks of doing that, I felt ready to hook up with him. Also, there was like some pressure from him. Like he was older than me in a fraternity. He obviously wanted to be hooking up already. So with the combination of like knowing it's what he wanted and me liking him as much as I did, we hooked up. Then classic, classic college experience. Literally, as soon as we hook up, this guy goes MIA. I don't hear from him for like days. And I'm like, great. Like seriously, this always happens in college. Sometimes you hook up with someone and then they just drop you. Like hooking up with you is all they wanted. And once they got it, like they're done. Like mission accomplished, you're conquered. Fucked up, but it's how the world works sometimes. I was like freaking out because I liked him so much. And I texted him like after a few days had passed and was basically just like, if for whatever reason you're done with me, I would appreciate it if you could have the respect to tell me that rather than just dropping me, seeing as we did have sex. And he basically was just like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And I was devastated. I cried so much. But I liked this guy so much. Like, like there are times that I felt like I liked him more than I ever even liked my ex. A few more days pass and he texts me being basically like, if you want to keep casually hooking up, we can do that, but I don't want anything more from you. And since I liked him so much, I was like, okay, well, maybe if we start hooking up over time, like he'll grow feelings for me, which is something that happens. If you start hooking up with someone consistently, usually feelings get involved eventually, and then it escalates into something else. It's very backwards nowadays. It's like you hook up with someone and then hope that one day it turns into a relationship, whereas in our parents' time, you're in a relationship, and then once that relationship is established, then you start having sex. Very backwards, very fucked up, but that's the world we live in. So we started hooking up, and it was kind of like a booty call thing. Like, it was very late night, and we wouldn't really talk a lot, like, during the day or anything. It was like a strictly hooking up thing. But I was dumb as fuck, and I was like, no, of course he's gonna like me one day. We're hooking up on and off for a long fucking time. Then in October of my freshman fall, so a couple months into this, Halloween, his fraternity throws like this big party for Halloween. And I go up to him at the party and I'm like, hey, like, am I going to come home with you? Like, that seems like maybe I would because we've been hooking up, right? This asshole literally says to my face in the middle of a party, uh, yeah, babe, like, I would, but I'm trying to fuck someone else tonight. Who says that to someone? Like, that alone should have been, like, the end. Like, goodbye, you're an asshole, fuck you, like, you know? But no, I suck. And then, like, two weeks pass, and he hit me up like nothing happened, and of course, like, I went to go hang out with him. Basically, to not make this video 400 minutes long, this went on forever. Hooking up, on and off having huge fights where we would like cuss each other out and send each other like really mean texts and whatever and be like we're never talking again fuck you like so pissed like obviously I had reason to like hate him and be mad because he was always so rude to me but like I never did anything to him so it was really fucked up it got to a point where 
my feelings for him were so strong. Why? I don't know. Like I told you, I felt some like connection with this guy from the first time I ever saw him. So when you throw sex into the mix, shit gets really fucking complicated. I started to explain to him that I liked him and I needed it to be more than like a hookup thing. I needed it to be more than like a booty call. And he like explained to me that, yeah, it seemed like a booty call, but it was more than that and it was on a respected level and like I did matter. And slowly over time, he started to say things to me that insinuated that he did care about me. Um, sometimes he said these things drunk, but honestly, drunk words are sober thoughts. Like the drunker you get, the looser you get, the less inhibition you have, the more willing you are to say things that you would never ever say sober. So I was like, of course, this guy actually gives a fuck about me. And I still firmly believe to this day that he did really actually care about me and grow some sort of feelings. This guy has a lot of emotional issues that are basically unfixable. He lost his dad five years ago. Um, he has trust issues because of things involving his family. Different things that have just really like rocked him to his core, which are understandable. I couldn't imagine losing a parent. But I don't think anything, no matter how bad something is that happens to you, is an excuse to treat other people like shit or use someone as your emotional punching bag. And that's basically what it came down to. It was I became his emotional punching bag. He would randomly text me rude things, freak out on me, call me horrible names. Like, this guy was honestly horrible. He fucking told me that one time he was going to go have sex with someone else. He yelled at me in the middle of a bar at a different party telling me that I was so into him but that he wasn't into me and that he would never be into me and I was just making a fool out of myself. Like literally yelled at me when I know these things aren't even true. Such a shit show. Ugh. Literally have repressed all these memories because they were so fucking horrible. One time when we hooked up, he told me that I could only sleep over if I would wake up in the morning walk to this breakfast place that's like a 10 minute walk from where he lived get him breakfast come back to give it to him and if i was lucky he would have sex with me again before i had to leave like what i don't even think movie writers could write up a fuck boy this big and i'm as much to blame because i stuck by him and made excuses for him even when he treated me like shit so I go home for summer, the summer between my freshman and sophomore fall, all the way back to Texas for the entire summer, three and a half months. Me and this guy don't speak at all. It's evident that we're over. Like, we're going to come back for the new school year after an entire summer apart. New year, we're done. Freshman year was a shit show. We should not continue that. I come back to FSU after being in Texas for three and a half months, and on my very first night back... I go with my friend who's in the same fraternity as this guy to go meet with someone or something at this townhouse that's across the street from the frat. So we go, we're talking to this kid, whatever. We leave, and as I'm leaving, by chance of fucking God, the universe, whatever, he, Troy, we'll call him, walks out of one of the townhouses and I'm just like, are you fucking kidding? This is my first night back after three and a half months and I'm by chance already running into him. So I just act completely polite and civil because it's been three and a half months. I'm just like, hey, Troy. And he's like in shock that I'm there. He's like, oh shit, like what's up, whatever, you know? It kind of shook me to have to see him, but it was whatever. Like I wasn't gonna text him, like it was over, like I'd made that decision. The next night I'm out at a bar and I get a Facebook message because this weird fucker sometimes Facebook messages me even though he has my number. I get a Facebook message from Troy being like, um, did I see you last night? What do you mean? Of course you saw me. So I was just like, yeah, sorry. I didn't know you lived there. Like, I don't know. Like, I didn't want to look like a stalker. And basically we started like talking and he was like, well, I just really felt compelled to say hey to you because I haven't seen you in a long time. Like, whatever. So me and him meet up that night and we have this long conversation and he's like, no, I do really care about you. Like, I want us to start working on being something more, blah, 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 all this shit, which is what I wanted to hear from him for an entire year. So like I'm on cloud nine now because I think by some miracle, something has changed where he now gives a shit and wants to like work on something with me.
a whole week passes and I don't hear from him, even after that whole conversation and seeing him and whatever. And I'm like, okay, this is fucking shady. Like now he wants to be something with me, but he hasn't talked to me in a week. Still a fuck boy. So I just don't give a fuck whatever moving on with my life. I run into him at a bar after like a whole week of not talking after that conversation and he is like, fuck, this is so awkward. And I say, this isn't awkward, Troy. You're just fucking weird. And he says, I'm not weird. I just lied to your face. I'm sorry, what? Who the fuck has the audacity to say these things to someone's face? I was like, then why did you text me when you saw me after a whole summer apart? And he just shrugged his shoulders. Because he knows I'm right. He's full of shit. This is what happens with this guy. He likes me, cares about me, whatever, on some level, but he's so emotionally fucked up and doesn't want to get close to anyone and doesn't know how to have a functioning relationship that the second he gets too close to me or starts to feel something more, he shuts himself out and treats me like shit to push me away because he doesn't want to have to do the like feelings relationship thing. It's so fucked up, but I know for a fact that's exactly what happens with him in this situation. I actually had one of my friends in his fraternity go talk to him in person and tell him that the shit he'd been saying and doing to me was fucked up and that I was a great girl and that I cared about him so much and that I was the last person that deserved his shit. And he basically couldn't even look him in the eye or talk to him about me. He like asked him to leave his apartment because he didn't want to have to have a conversation about me. We don't talk for like ever, like months. And then we met up again and talked again and hooked up again. And he kind of fed me the same shit like no I really want to see you and when he sees me he's like very endearing and stuff you know like me and this guy click really really well and when we see each other in person like we get along really well well when we go hang out when I see him I don't talk to him obviously <laughs> then we like hooked up again he went back to not talking to me and then right before last semester ended like mid-november he texted me to see me or something and we met up and I like had the balls to tell him that I loved him, which I know sounds crazy. No, I'm not in love with him, but do I have love and care in my heart for this person? Absolutely. Like it's been a shit show and a wild ride and it was horrible and fucked up and all these negative terms. But at the end of the day, I have never felt such a connection or cared about someone so much. Why? I don't know, but I did. Obviously, he didn't say it back. But he hugged me and we stood in the middle of his room hugging for like a solid minute, like a whole 60 seconds of time passing. And we're just standing there hugging and we hooked up, of course, like we don't know how to not hook up. And then when I left, he hugged me and kissed me goodbye, which seems like obvious, right? Like, of course, like you hug and kiss someone goodbye. He has never done that before. So like that was significant. So I don't know. It was kind of just like validation that like he appreciated what I said and he cared. I don't know. I just got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. So I texted him a couple weeks after that because it was about to be Christmas break, this break that just happened. So this is kind of like real time now. And I was like, hey, look, like going into the new year, like I don't want to do this anymore. I do care about you. I do stick by what I said, but I just can't continue to do this. Like it's done. Like don't contact me. I can't do this. Like for the sake of my fucking mental health, I can't do this. He never replied, but I know he read it. So he got the point. We're done. Then like a couple weeks into Christmas break on Christmas Eve of all days and nights, he Facebook messaged me so randomly. I was like in shock to even see that he face messaged me. I read this message. He's flipping a shit on me, cussing me out as he's done now 10 times before. Just like calling me names, like telling me that I'm a stalker and that I'm a crazy bitch and all this shit, literally for no reason. Like his um, reason for this was because he said he heard through the grapevine that I said that him and I had a thing. Yeah, we did. We did have a thing. What's so wrong with saying that? It's not like I told people he was my fucking boyfriend. And I just replied to him, like, really professionally and maturely. And basically was like, I don't deserve to be spoken to this way. I don't understand why you're even saying these things to me. Like, this is so inappropriate. Whatever. Like, have a nice rest of your break. Haven't heard from him since. I run into him a lot. We act like we're complete strangers. All I can say is that in college, you're for sure going to start hooking up with someone or talking to someone or whatever that you're going to have like 
really strong feelings for and that person either is not going to have feelings back or is going to literally be using you for sex or isn't going to be emotionally in a place that they can give you what you need, which all of those things were kind of an accumulation of my situation. The best advice I can give is as hard as it is, it'd be to walk away from someone who doesn't respect you way sooner than later. Like, I don't know why I stuck by someone who treated me like such shit and couldn't give me what I wanted for so long. Just, like, have enough self-respect to walk away from someone like that. Like, you will meet someone who does give a shit about you. Like, that's literally the best advice I can give. Like, even if you don't want to walk away, if you know that you're not being treated right, just bite the bullet and cut that person out of your life. Also, I think it's a very common thing for people to get very hung up on someone or have feelings for someone that they know that they can't be with, but you can't make someone want to be with you. You can't make someone like you, and you shouldn't even want to. Like, if someone doesn't want to be with you, that's not an issue with you. Like, that's an issue with them, you know? Like, the right person for you is going to want to be with you, and it's hard, especially being an emotional girl, but you just honestly can't care. You know, just like have respect for yourself and walk away from a situation if it's not making you completely happy because there's too many people in the world and there's too many opportunities and there's too many things coming your way that are going to be huge blessings for you to even waste a second of your time on someone or something who is literally like a roadblock to your future and your happiness, you know? I hope this experience was relatable to someone or helped someone or made them understand that fuckboys come in all shapes and sizes. Even the ugliest of guys can be fuckboys. Like, you would think someone that looks like him would look at someone like me and be like, wow, she's completely out of my league. But no, this guy was so fucked up. And that's all there really is to it.